Well, it's 10.30 in the morning on here on Monday the 3rd of June and I'm all ready to go. It's a very heavy bike at the moment. I did decide to bring along my bike lock. Um, but let's go. That drive train. The drive train is sounding so smooth. Cycling down the Cotter Road. This will be the best cycling for a while in terms of road service. So I'm just eating my capsicum, as you do. But um, that over there is the Brindabella Ranges. And I'm going to try and cross those today, which is quite ambitious. Um, last time I tried, it took me a day and a half. But I want to get to Tumut today, which is on the other side. is so still right now it's crazy I swear there's a front moving through one of my friends who I'm visiting in Leeton Jordan just sent me a text saying it's raining there time to reduce a bit of weight I have a grapefruit here and I also have the candy melon <laughs> which I've never eaten before but I'm sure I'll like it it's apparently kind of like a rock melon crossed with a honeydew. There's not going to be any leftovers because I have nowhere to put them. It tastes a lot like a rock melon. Look at this, it's got a uh, triangular seed structure. Well, this is where the sealed road finishes and the gravel road starts on Brindabella Road. I think the temperature at the moment would be about four or five degrees. And the only reason that I'm fine is because I'm moving. Anyway, there's another 500 meters or so of climbing, maybe a little bit less than that. And then I'll reach the high point. We'll see if there's any snow up there. I found a 14 mil spanner on the ground, but uh, there's not much I can do with that. <laughs> I could have used a 12 mil. I often find tools on the on the road when I'm bike touring. I brought a hammer back from Tasmania. <laughs> anyway, <sighs> that doesn't count as littering because somebody else did it. How cool is this? The little eucalypts have blue leaves. They've um, colonized this hill slope here. But when they grow older, they get green leaves. <laughs> How are you meant to photosynthesize when bogans keep coming past and spraying you with mud? <laughs> That's what I want to know. I wonder if those leaves would just drop off because they're not useful. Gotta drive your 4B fast around the corners. It started hailing on me, so it's very close to freezing. Um, but I've got some delicious scrolls that Sabrina made me, so I am looking forward to eating these. Thank you, Sabrina, if you're watching. I appreciate it. <laughs> They're so yummy.
it shouldn't be too far until I get to the top of this hill. Maybe I've been I've been pedaling uphill for about three hours, and uh, it's getting rather miserable. All things considered, I think I'm pretty close to the top. I'm gonna have to camp up here. I haven't even reached Brenda Bella. Isn't this beautiful? Snowing. Here in Brenda Bella's Namaji National Park. Well, as beautiful as this snow is, I wish it would stop. I've never actually seen it snow in Australia, I don't think. I don't think I've ever been in snow in Australia before. Ugh. And the time is 3.26. Uh, and it's 80 k's to Tume at 12 k's to Brindabella. I don't think I'm going to camp here. I think I'm going to go down to Brindabella where it's not snowing, probably. Oh dear. Beautiful, but very, very, very cold. And I was not prepared for this. I would have brought my snow gloves if I'd known. Interestingly, it's actually less cold now that it's snowing than prior to this. I think having everything frozen makes things a bit easier, actually. Oh, it's so pretty. And my hands are actually feeling better now than they were 10 minutes ago. It's falling in great big clumps. But it is melting, so it can't be freezing down here. It must be two or three degrees still. I'm not going up to that campsite. I think that would be very unsafe. If we end up having 30 centimeters or, or more of snow, I'm fucked, to put it bluntly. Riding along in the snow at 1300 meters elevation was making me cold, so I figured I should make a beeline for Brindabella Valley, which I did. Down in the valley it was still raining and I was putting more clothes on to try and stay warm. Just as I was preparing to tackle the next mountain, a ute stopped and the driver, who introduced himself as David, told me that he'd just come from Tumut and that it was snowing very heavily behind him. I'd wanted to ride through the night to get there, but he reckoned that would be unsafe and offered for me to come and sit in front of his fire instead. I trusted his judgment as a local, so I took him up on that offer. David took me to his rustic farm campsite, fed me and chatted with me until 10pm while rain poured down on the tin roof. I was just hoping the next day would be sunny with a passable road to Tumut. David owns this farm at Brenda Bella and so I've just been spending the afternoon chatting with him and he's offered me a bed. A uh, really great example of random kindness of strangers. First time I've actually accepted a, an offer such as that so but you know he's a local and I trusted his judgment that it was unsafe. Um, so he's gonna he's fed me, he's he's really looked after me. Thank you, David. Anyway, I'm going to get to bed now and um, see you tomorrow. So David, how many how many travellers do you think you've had here? Oh, uh, and made a lot of friends around the world, uh, particularly from the UK, uh, Canada, those kind of places. Um, yeah, to this day we still visit uh, uh, friends from, uh, that we've made in the UK. So yeah, lifelong friendship established round campfires here and now.
well, here we are at the farm at Brindabella. And it's a beautiful morning. I was staying in this cabin here. And, um... There will probably be a lot of snow up on these hills up here. Um... Uh, but it's sunny, so that's... Something. <laughs> um... I've got the fire going, you can probably see up here. And this is where David's family often put up their tents and things. That's the Gubrigandra, I think. It's it's the river that flows through Br Brindabella. It just goes over there behind the row of hedges, bushes. Anyway, it's a beautiful morning. David's going to go pig hunting. He's been eating his feed. Old pet family of wallabies. You got, you got your wallabies. Little wobblies. <laughs> wobblies. <laughs> Do you recall what route you would have considered taking had you gone with Jasper? Uh, isn't I mean, there just one road that goes through um, through Wee Jasper? From Wee Jasper through to Tumut, there are three different ways basically. One is Nottingham Road. Okay. Atrocious. Atrocious. Um, okay. The, the best way Very is to get yourself onto <coughs> Wee Jasper Forest Road. Old Navy. Uh, hangars they're called. Uh, they were used for pushing aircraft into and that sort of stuff. So that's surplus Second World War shed. Uh, we bought it from the then, because Brindabella Station used to basically be the entire valley and more initially. Hey you girl, he's alright. Yes he's a stranger but he's alright. Do these two have names? Uh, Brumby 1 and Brumby, Brumby 2. One and Brumby two. Yeah. That's mother and that's daughter, we reckon. Uh, and they're just lovely girls, aren't you? Hey, you're gorgeous mm, girls. They're still shy. Still and they, shy. They're probably a little bit more shy because they're so aware of someone who's not me. <laughs> <coughs> hey, the, you each have your own. Mm. No worries. Mm. Hello, cow. Mm. So there's Miles Franklin's house apparently, over there. Uh, they're very easily spooked, aren't they? Yes, it's very wary. You can see a little bit of snow up on the mountain up there. Yeah, yep. Not too much. That truck is made I'm in 1942. I'm the of that truck. <laughs> because again, there's a bit of a, a surplus uh, piece of war equipment because it sounds like a male, doesn't it? Oh, so she went and for a females yeah. did not get published. She did not meet her publisher until after he had agreed in Sydney. Uh, she was sending manuscripts and that to him, and he thought, Wow, this, this is great. 
and uh, she just always just referred to herself as uh, uh, Miles, and she would try and write in a in a heavier, bolder handwriting. Uh, to keep the pretense to alive. man it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, the early feminists had to do a lot of that sort exactly. of thing, yeah. And uh, and I asked Lindsay, my old mate, whether he'd read any of her books. He said, "No, nah, haven't got time." You know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And he was a cousin. He, he died about ten years ago. And his his last name was also Franklin. Yeah. 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 Cousin of hers. Yeah. It was Franklin Country, and there's. There's Mount Franklin. Ah, uh, yes. Named after their family. There's Mount Aggie uh, near Mount Franklin. <laughs> Over Bill. There's Franklin Gully that we actually go past on our way up to where we're in here. I was so, just going to say, is there Franklin Dam? And I remembered that's in Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Look, there are lots and lots of Franklins around. Franklin everything. Yes. The owners of that have tried to tell people that this is where Miles Franklin grew up. No. The tutor that came into Brindabella Valley used to turn up there, so Miles would ride a pony from down Bobilla, as it was called. She referred to Brindabella Valley as Bobilla, and that block of where that house is, is Bobilla. Right. That's where she lived. Right. But they like to claim that this is where Miles Franklin grew up. Coming down this road last time, I, I came from um, from I came through Tumbarumba actually, then through Tumut, yeah. uh, through Batlow Tumut, and then through this way. Coming down this particular road, I uh, almost broke my bike because uh, of how corrugated it was in parts. Uh, you you will have a little bit of corrugation in front of you, unfortunately, on the gravel. Ah uh, yes, I I remember riding on that on on the way up. Forestry maintained it fairly well, but. The trucks on it. Yeah, the sheer, the no, sheer scale they're, of the when they're breaking trucking and operation. When they're accelerating, that's what causes the corrugations to fall. No snow yet, that's surprising. No, but once we get up around Lyora, which is the name of another place up here, um, that's so where it'll kick will be evidence kick in. snow. Well, there's the tiniest little bit of ice left on the ground. It's not much. Just a little bit. Nowhere near as deep as I expected it to be, so that's kind of good. I expected 30 centimeters of snow up here. snow all over the road well it's actually not on the road it's off the road but very pretty it's better than yesterday when it was falling on me oh, we have a wallaby in the bushes I have here my root so this part here is just from Canberra through to Leeton um, but you can see down the bottom here uh, we have the elevation. I stayed down here last night and David has taken me up that huge elevation there, bit of elevation there. I'm actually right at the top here, uh, right up at 1,173 meters, which is why you can see snow, I suppose. Um, and looks like it's all downhill from this little bit of stuff here, but Chimit's just here, so, or well, not here, it's a little bit further on.
it's down here. So there's a huge amount of descending to come. This bit here is all bitumen. That's what my elevation looks like. So from Chimit on, it's pretty flat, so I'll be able to do big Ks. Hello, Brumby. How you going? And we're onto the asphalt. It's gonna be pretty fast from here, from what I am picturing from the last time I came on this road. All right. Already doing 50 k's an hour. Now I'm doing 60. Now I'm doing 70. I'm going to take this opportunity to remove my rain clothes because I'm not worrying about dirt splashing on me now. Well, I'm in Tumut now, Tumut River right there. I thought I'd take the scenic path along the river to get into town. But I just dropped my sunglasses. Well, it's a pleasant afternoon. A little bit windier than I'd like, but not too bad. Coming through. <sighs> What's the time now? 1.30. So I think I'll be finished in Tumut by about three o'clock, which means I'll be able to get to maybe Adelong for dinner. And if I get up early tomorrow, I might be able to make it to Leeton by nightfall. That over there is David's house, actually. He told me to go and knock on the door and say hello to his wife, but I don't know if I will. I have a whole bunch of food here, peanut butter, grapefruit, and the very special marmalade that Alice made me, so thank you, Alice. Here we have some butter as well. Got some biscuits, got some spinach too. Um, I don't know what that will go with, spinach with butter. Spinach with peanut butter? I don't know. Anyway, no shortage of interesting food. And there's a kid over there having a cry. That's what kids are want to do. It's made a very good seal. She gave me a very small jar deliberately so I could stick it on the bike, but uh, I was trying to get an even smaller jar, but this was the smallest jar she had. It's even got lemon seeds in it. It's so much warmer down here in Tumut. I'm wearing, well, everything I was wearing up in the snow except for the rain clothes on top. But I'm very comfortable. That's really tasty. 
It's got a tartness to it. So I'm going to go and deposit some cash because I don't want I don't want someone to come and rob me and take all my cash. I've got like a thousand bucks in cash at the moment on me. And then I'll head off to Adelong tonight. It's going to be about three o'clock, but by the time I'm finished here in Tumut, and the sun sets at six, so I want to be set up by five or five thirty. Don't think I'm going to make it to Leeton before Wednesday night at the earliest. Sadly, but it's been fun so far. I'm amazed at how when you're bike touring every day is so different and when you go to sleep at night after a, after a day of bike touring your mind is just going through all the memories just coming to Adelong now where a truck lost its brakes and went straight into the hotel. They had to refix the whole facade. Here we are in the something something valley on Grahamston Road which goes from Adelong to Genie. <laughs> anyway it's just on twilight and I'm about to, about to set up camp. There's a reserve not too far away, about half an hour's ride. And I'll be up early in the morning to try to get to Leeton as early as possible. Well, I couldn't find a campsite, so here's the Hume Highway, and I might just keep riding towards Jimmy uh, just until I get bored of it I've never really ridden at night on a tour um, and I figure why not you know Good morning. We're here in, well, kind of halfway between the Hume Highway and Junee, or not halfway, maybe a quarter of the way, uh, on the old Hume Highway. And I camped here under these bushes last night so my bike is here uh, all packed up ready to go this is I think the earliest I've ever been up on a bike tour and I'll just show you the road so I had this little mound here which sort of helped to conceal me from the road which is why I chose this spot I also had those bushes so this road is actually extremely flat considering 
where we are um, and it remains flat for the next 20 kilometers it's a beautiful country and I'm starting to see really familiar sights because I grew up well about two hours drive west of here so I'm gonna try and get to Leeton today which is well it is where I grew up but it's about 184 kilometers so it's very very flat there's no wind at this stage I'm hoping to get to Geneva before 12 o'clock and then it's another 130 kilometers from there 120 kilometers from there so I might be able to get in by 9 or 10 p.m. we'll see my ambitious estimates may be <laughs> continuing who knows here we have the Murrumbidgee River there's frost everywhere, fog everywhere to my bike and we have first light over here as well So beautiful. Well, I'm here in Wantabadgery, which is a candidate for one of the funnier Australian place names. It's a very small locality. It's got about, well, I'd say, 150 people living here. And it's time for breakfast. This is halfway between the Hume Highway and Juni. Or maybe it's halfway between where I camped and Juni. I don't know. But it's, uh, it's about 8.30, I'd say. Um, I'll just check that. Yeah, it's 8.36, so <sighs> it's a beautiful morning. The frost has just about melted, and I'm on River Road, which follows the Murrumbidgee River, so again, perfect for cycle touring, because it's just flat, dead flat. Here's Juni Railway Station. 
done in a very similar style to Albury's Rails, railway station and Woggers for that matter. Well, while in Juni, eat licorice. It's good. So this is the Juni licorice and chocolate factory. It used to be a flour mill until the current owners bought the building before it was going to be demolished and converted it into a licorice and chocolate factory. Um, I actually once won the licorice bowling event here um, and scored some free licorice. You had to throw a big chunk of licorice up into a chute and whoever could get it in won. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm going to buy a little bit of licorice and head on to Kuluman and then Narendra. in Kuluman now. Heading through to Matong and Gem Main. It's about quarter to three right now. Um, we've got about 94 kilometers to go. So I'm expecting to be in Leeton, well, at Jordan's place specifically at around 7.30. But if I get a big wind, it'll be later and it could be earlier too, we'll see. It depends also how much I stop. See, Narendra is 60 k's away. Leeton's another 30 from that, so. Well, I'm in Grong Grong. Try and show you what it looks like. And I'm just eating some bread with avocado as the sun goes down. So, Naran it looks like I'll be getting to Narandra in the twilight and then Leeton in the dark. I'm guessing I'm going to be in Leeton by about 8 o'clock tonight. The time now is, I guess, about 5.30, but I'll check. Oh no, it's five. So it's five. There you go. As I met the Newell Highway, sunset turned to twilight, turned to night over endless horizon, with lonely ancient escarpments melting into the plains. Lined with hundreds of red tail lights, B-doubles and road trains roared past me in packs, separated by minutes of silence. And signs saying 50 kilometres to Narandra slowly morphed into signs saying 35, into signs saying 10. Narendra was asleep and echoed with the faint sounds of engine brakes and diesel engines as prime movers rolled through town and idled at the service station. I left the noise behind as I took the road out of town towards the Rockdale feedlot. Apart from the sound of my bike, there was an eerie and absolute stillness about the landscape between Narendra and Leeton, accompanied by intense, magnificent stars. This was a very surreal experience and felt almost like being watched. As I got closer to Yenko, the total and oppressive silence was punctuated by the occasional passing cattle truck and by the rumbling and idling of heavy locomotives by the irrigation canal. I rolled down Yenko's bike path under tungsten streetlights and then through the dark back blocks of Leeton to arrive at Jordan's house at around 9pm. <laughs> 